Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. So does anyone remember, I remembered it as being Warner Brothers, but I just Googled it and it was a Tex Avery uh, cartoon called Symphony in Slang. It's it's old, it's from the 50s, but they used to show it on repeats well into like the you know, 70s and 80s. It's like this blonde guy and he talks and it, they they translate everything very literally. He's like, I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. And they show him he's a baby. He's like, so yesterday I was saying, you know, we got this new signed tier by Stallone. He's signing 25 books, 25 books only. And I said, don't sleep on it. I was being literal. Like, do not go to sleep if you want to do this because you're going to miss out. And it was very nearly true. Uh, so uh, this thing launched about 15 hours ago, this tier. Um, and 19 out of 25 are gone. There's only six left. And again, there are, there are only going to be 25. There are not going to be any more. We're not going to find five extra. Like the people who backed this, they backed it with the understanding that there will only be 25. And so there will only be 25. Now, I'm like, these can't be like just like the regular book. So I'm going to be at the printers in like a week or two for Iron Sights too. And we're going to talk. So <laughs> it, it just says book. One of the things I've learned over the uh, the years is uh, the more specific you get, the less options you have. I mean, that's kind of obvious, but it took me a while to learn it. So basically, I just said signed book. And then uh, but now I'm like, oh, yeah, you're definitely going to, you know, it's going to be probably a hardcover or definitely some sort of like enhanced uh, version. Um, so it seriously, like, do not wait. I expect all of these to be gone um, by the end of today. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, I saw this news article and it, it made uh, Newsarama and uh, Bleeding Cool. I actually haven't perused this one yet. I just clicked on both of them. Uh, but I went through this one earlier today. And I'm actually really happy about it. So I just talked about a, a cartoon from 1951. So now I'm going to talk about my childhood and the in the 70s and 80s but it's funny i'm only in my 40s but it sounds like i grew up in the wild west or something like that like when i was a kid and even into my young adulthood like when i moved to new york city when i was like eight just turned 18 things were wild like you could suddenly find yourself in a street fight because you made eye contact with someone and I'm not talking about glaring at him. I mean, you just kind of look over, you're kind of just thinking, but you're accidentally like, you like hold that look to him. Hey, what are you looking at? Oh boy, here it goes. Here it, here it goes. Uh, but the other thing, and then that's pretty crazy. <laughs> but the other thing back then is you had this thing about uh, uh, respect. And you could respect someone you don't even like. Uh, that's basically been done away with. You can either like someone or not like someone. And if you don't like them, it's because they're the most evil person ever. It's not just because you guys have different points of view. But, I mean, even up until, you know, 10 years ago, um, this was still common. You're like, yeah, I don't like that guy, but I do respect what he did. So uh, yesterday I was saying I, I really respect what Eric Larson and I'm assuming Jordan White, the editor of that Captain America the End, they did a Captain America story in current year, and it had nothing to do, well, I mean, maybe it teeny tiny like symbolic bit but it, it, it they just presented it as an adventure hero story and i was really impressed and then um this uh devil's do they announced a new imprint and the way they did it these comic comics are absolutely not for me i would never buy these comics in a million years but i really respect the hell out of their honesty so what they did is let's just jump into it after aoc comics's success Devil's Do is launching left-leaning political imprint. So I, I, I mentioned in a video the other day that uh, SJWs in the American comic book industry are now holding political purity tests for foreigners. They're basically saying, choose a side. And I talked to one guy, he's like, I'm a foreigner. I don't know your political parties. I know Trump, but I don't know like the other people. Like, I don't even know, like, they're they're asking me to choose a political party to get a job in comics. It's, it's so, so AOC is, is an upstart. She, uh, she ran for, uh, um, uh, a position 
as a representative. We got senators. There's 100 senators, two per state. And then we got representatives. Oh, I should have looked it up. It's something like 300. There's a lot of them. And that goes by districts, you know, so more populous states will have more of them. So she ran for a, uh, a, a traditionally Democratic district with a guy who had been there for a while. And he had, he had been voted in so many times that he didn't even really bother running. Because if I really need to take a civics class, I think representatives have to run like every two years. It's ridiculous. Um uh, <laughs> it's stuck in politics, a guy from a guy who can barely uh, talk about. It. Anyway, um, what I'm saying, it's it's a more minor position than a senator. It's easier to get. And the guy who run, he's just like, whatever, I always get reelected. He basically didn't, he, he like didn't even show up, literally at events. So she ran and she got it. And she's like a, a waitress in her late 20s. And so, you know, she's she's like photogenic and she's young and it was like this cool, like upstart story. So she very, very quickly became, I would not say important in American politics because she's still a very junior you know, representative, but um, kind of symbolically important. Like she's got a lot of Twitter followers and stuff, but she's still like a junior, you know, uh, representative. So um, they started doing some, uh, I think they were called the Amazing AOC something like that. And people have been hitting me up. They're like, you know, yo, hammer this. And a couple things. Number one, I don't consider political comics to be real comics. So <laughs> not to be too snooty, but I, I don't really review political comics. Like, you know, like Obama man, or I, I did, uh, I did one, but that to me was uh, a humor comic. And I even sold it. I go, you don't have to be political. This is like, it's basically like Mad Magazine. Um, but most, like, I, I flipped through this to the story. It was like subpar art. I don't even remember, like, jokes, except for if you think it's funny to draw her like a superhero. Like, you go, girl. It's like, I, fine, I don't care. Um, uh, but so, um, okay, let's just jump into it. Months after releasing 2019's most talked about comic. Okay, that's... 2019's most talked about comic was Simon Frog Blood Honey. But, you know, it's it's a press release. It's hype. It's fine. Um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the Freshman Force, Chicago's Devil's Due Comics, has announced the formation of Ballot Box Comics. Listen carefully. An imprint, a.k.a. a subsidiary division, dedicated to progressive politics and populist movements that challenge both the right and the center left. Why do I like this? Because they are saying what no one would say. They are saying, look, this is an imprint. This is our politics. This is who we're going for. This is who we're against or opposing, even, you know, even if it's respectfully opposing. The deal is, the elephant in the room is, their politics are no different than the politics of most of the industry as it is now. The destroyed mean girls atmosphere. I mean, there are literal com constant political period tests. John Lehman, it's funny, at one point he was, you know, uh, tweeting, he can't get enough work. And the other one, he's like, I can't get enough. Uh, he says he can't get enough uh, people to work with him. But then he openly says, I will ask who you're voting for. And I will ask what your politics before you, you, I will work with you. It's r ridiculous. All I say is, you know, enjoy your, enjoy poverty or, 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 Enjoy a lack of uh, abundance, which you are cutting yourself off uh, by your extreme political thoughtery. Um, but uh, so the idea, and I've talked to people before, they're like, well, there's plenty of Republicans in, um, in the comic book industry. I go, well, you know, name them. And I'm even talking privately. They're like, well, I can't. Yeah, because they'd be targeted <laughs> because it is so dangerous to, to simply just say you're Republican. Not not conservative, not arch conservative, far right, alt right. Just say I'm Republican, and they will. I mean, Alana Smith said that straight up. She threatened current contractors, potential contractors. If you vote for Trump, we will keep track of it, and we will respond accordingly. Which means they will stop working with you if they're working with you, and they will not work with you. If, you know, if if you were potentially you know hireable, you know. Who is not potentially hireable by modern Marvel? 
Um, uh, so uh, we so this is a quote. We've never thought of comic books as being limited to a specific genre, explains Josh Blaylock, who founded Devil's Do nearly 20 years ago. The main thing I know Devil's Do from is they brought back the G.I. Joe license. The G.I. Joe uh, regular series ended in the mid 90s, I think uh, 96, 95, 96. And then there were no G.I. Joe comics for, well, I mean, it was like five or six years. But at the time, it just seemed like forever. Um uh, so they brought him back and th those were good. Like the first two or three years. Uh, oh gosh, there's this one guy named Brandon Badeau and he was freaking off the chain. So good. He got some work at Dark Horse doing some uh, Star Wars comics. Those were really good. I mean, it's, uh, and then I think he got a little Marvel work and then I think he left comics. But I remember them uh, fondly. The, the one I always remember is the G.I. Joe had been disbanded and then they were reforming it. So they were calling everyone and everyone's like, hey, gung-ho, you want to come back? He's like, I'm on it. You know, and then like they're like, they called uh, one guy, I forget who it was. And he's like, I'm on it. And then they cut to him and they show him and he's been out of the military for like five or six years. He's like 280 pounds. <laughs> that stuff is real. So, man, I'm OK. So more Oldie Olsen uh, talks. So when you enlist in the American military, no matter what, whether you sign, you know, for three years, four, five, six, you're actually in for eight. And that's uh, counts after you do your active time, you then go into the IRR, it's the individual ready reserve. And they do that because they're spending a lot of money training you. And they're like, we are not going to spend all this money just for you to be in the army for three years. Like, even though you don't have to show up to drill or anything like that, you're still part of the military. We can call on you. So what happens is when uh, when uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom popped off in 2003, all of a sudden they started reactivating all these people in the IRR, some of whom who had been out for like five years. So uh, and usually when they do that, you have a very specific um uh mos that they need like you're like uh, something with intel you're an interrogator we really needed interrogators so you know one time we're over there uh you know we get back to our fob and you know, we just established it and we see this dude in a navy uniform and this dude's like 300 pounds and we're just shocked we're like this has got to be a reporter and they let him use no no he's got a name tape he's got a rank so finally people are just like bruh he's like i know right He's like, dude, I told him, I told him. He did something very technical with like satellites or something like that. Satellite uplink, something like that. He's like, dude, I was fatter then. I told him, I told him like, dude, I'm like 350 right now. They go, we don't care. We need you, you know, you know, needs of the needs of the military. So they brought him back and this dude was big as a house. Anyway, getting back to, uh, 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 Devils do. So Just Blaylock says um, about comics, they're a powerful medium for all kinds of stories to be told. And with Ballot Box Comics, we're excited to create engaging content with a political leaning that pushes back against this administration's off the rails status quo. So this is a weird statement. While I would never buy these comics in a million years and even flipping through them, I got kind of annoyed. I was just like, it takes a long time to make a comic. Like I, I consider it to be just such a waste to do something like this. Um, uh, but I think they make some money and, and I think they make above average for their sales. They lost the GI Joe uh, license like eight years ago and they, they kind of disappeared after that. Um, they pop up every now and then, but uh, they're not like a steady publisher like they used to be. So uh, going on, it says, Ballot Box Comics' mandate is to produce original titles for the percentage of the com country that believes in such radical causes. Oh, th this is a quote. They didn't put the quote at the beginning, so I, I thought this was the article. This is a quote. Believes in such radical causes as social equality and standing up to government corruption. No, I, I don't know. They're, okay, no, that wasn't a quote. If there's one thing, the worldwide success of... A, a, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the freshman force taught us, Blaylock says, it's that politically and socially minded comic book readers are seriously underrepresented. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm going to do a T.O. on it. That is absolutely not true. Um, the comic book industry acts as if 
the extreme, extreme politics of the people in the industry, which is basically everyone they haven't kicked out, or you just, you're just like, oh gosh, I don't want to work with these clowns. So it's extremely far left. I mean, I still think to this day that Mark Wade and Kwanzaa Osa Jeffo, they just think we're a bunch of meanie beanies. They're like, well, these guys are just, you know, young teens trying to express, no, like every normal person of multiple different, you know, political ideologies, libertarian, Democrat, Republican. I've never had someone say, hey, your take is too hot. Your, take, your hot take is nuclear. When I say that the main characters in Ignited are terrorists, everyone's like, they read it, they go, yeah, those are terrorists. They'll be like, yeah, dude, I'm a lefty and, and these are obvious terrorists. Um, what I'm saying is the industry is so far to the left, many of them extremists to the left, that they actually believe, no, it, it, everything is focused to that extreme left. The very far left or extreme left. That is that is the target that they, but that's a small target. Most people are not like that. Most Democrats are not extremists far left. So the idea that it's not an underrepresented, you know, oh, we're not focusing on that group. It's just that group is really small. There's not a lot of extremists in any spectrum. So the problem is that the comic book industry has catered to extremists, not that they did not cater to extremists. So um, Ballot Box Comics' flagship release is entitled Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the Freshman Force Ballot Box Collection. The 144 trade... Oh, guys, it's got to be excruciating. I mean, you get the joke in the bit in, like, two pages. What, is she just going to, like... I don't even know these... Schumer? There's someone named Schumer, right? Is Schumer on her side or the other side? Like, you got to go to every single... You know, it's just someone who watches the news obsessively. Oh, she just punched Schumer. Yes! I show... I hope she punches... Is the guy who looks like a turtle? Whatever that's... Oh, she just punched the guy who looks like a turtle. I hope she punches... The, the guy from Fox News with the really low hairline. Who's that guy? He's always, like, smirking. I hate that guy. Oh, I hope he punches him! <laughs> like, it's just 144 pages. Oh, oh, I hope the, Oh, I just turned it! Oh, he punched the person I wish you would punch! Uh, I mean, if you like it, that's fine. But the idea that the um, comic book industry has failed to produce content for the extremist far left is ridiculous. The problem is they've overwhelmingly done that to the detriment of, you know, uh, uh, low sales for everyone who... Who does that? Although, weirdly enough, if your sales are so low that they are non-existent, which is what Devil Stew has had for the last 10 years, you can actually get a bump up. Everything's relative. Um, uh, Pre-orders now available at OcasioComic.com. Um, and if you're wondering, oh, is this endorsed in America because she's a politician and she's a the highest level of public figure? We have different levels. We have, like, private citizen. I forget what it's called. It's called, like, semi-public figure or something and then we have public figure so there's different rules for um so you can absolutely just do ocasio comic and you don't have to get her permission um the book is chock full of short form comics depicting aoc her squad and bernie sanders as corruption fighting superheroes cool <laughs> satirical games puzzles trump and gop skewering and much more Conceived by Blaylock, the Ballot Box Collection features contributions by numerous award-winning artists and contains three comics in one paperback collection. Is there any, oh, I was going to say, any uh, is there any art? But then when there was none, I said, thanks. <laughs> cool. Okay, so let's see if the Bleeding Cool has anything additional. No, they're just... They're just quoting the... Okay, so there's nothing additional there. So, so yeah. So, once again, I mean, I'll, I'll reiterate. I think comics like this are not real comics. They're just stunts. I think it's a complete waste of almost anyone's time to do them. You're going to spend six months on this, which is going to be a dead meme, like, next year. Whereas you could spend that six months doing something that's going to be valuable, you know, to the reader 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. Um... But if you are going to be political, and if you are political, you should say it. 
you should say, we are a, how do they describe it? Ded uh, dedicated to progressive politics and populist movement that challenges both the right and the center left. I want to sell to everyone. 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 Um, so there's not going to be any political focus, political targeting. Uh, uh, you're all green to me. Um, money green. <laughs> so anyway, uh, okay, let's go back and uh, look at Expendables Go to Hell. See how that's moved since I started talking. We're at 85,000 and oh, my internet is trash this morning. Look at this. I'm trying to repopulate a page I'm already on. Whatever. I'm sure we're at a little bit. On my phone, I got some uh, notice of some sales. Oh, and I got my soundproof uh, wireless earbud. So yeah, this is, oh, oh geez, it went up. A lot. Did I just sell another? I think I might have sold another autographed one. Yep. Okay, so remember when I said don't sleep on it? Do not sleep on it. There were six left when I started this. It's what, 15 minutes later? There are now only five. It's 9 27 a.m. local time central uh, in the in Texas, so do not sleep on this. If you're at work and you're like, oh, I'm gonna do this when I get home, don't don't wait. There are not gonna be any extras, and these will be plussed. You know, they will be plussed up. They will be enhanced. It's not gonna be just you know one of the the regular editions. Um, even though I did uh, say cover choices, and you do have that, I think you know since this is bespoke, essentially, it's bespoke. There's only 25 of you, so. I just, oh, speaking of respect, so a very talented artist came to uh, us, you know, after the project went public. Actually, several of them did. And we had to say, hey, we, oh, you guys are great, but we actually don't need anyone else. I mean, we got, you know, future projects. Let's talk about this. So I, I turned one guy down and he's amazing. And I was like, your stuff's great, but like we already got five covers. Like I don't, I don't need any more. So he's like, yeah, cool, you know. And so he he just he just did a money move. He he did an entire cover and just showed it. He goes, hey, I know you didn't hire me. I did it anyway. To which I said, okay, we, we need to talk. Well, I I need to get this thing. That's a money move. I respect the hell out of it. And the cover is amazing. So what I, what I may do once we get all 25, which is going to be basically the end of the day, is show them the cover. Say, hey, I know you did individuals, but this is what I'm thinking. A special cover art for you. Now, this cover art will probably, well, it'll, you know, it'll definitely get used later um, uh, for, you know, another edition or something like that or a floppy or something like that. But this will be the first time it's used and it'll be just for... Uh, uh, well, I mean, it'll probably be for the hardcovers. I'll probably do at least, I mean, at least 25 hardcovers. I mean, honestly, if I just have to sit there and watch them stitch it, I mean, you're spending a thousand dollars. You're not going to get like just the average trade par paperback. You're going to get, it's going to be bespoke, amazing, inspected, all of those type of things. So, um, I, I will just individually, I'll, uh, you know, uh, email everyone and be like, Hey, what do you think about this? Um, uh, so, uh, don't don't sleep on it. Do not sleep on it. There are five left. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. The links for Expendables Go to Hell is in the in the description. And uh, I'll have a, a new comic review up next. Thanks. Bye.